We are back again. And we are going to be resuming where we stopped last time. So I'll be taking you chemistry and welcome, you are welcome to this part. Now, before we continue, let's try to make reference to what we did in the previous class. I remember we talked about chemical equilibrium and we're able to see reasons why saturated solutions can be said to be in chemical equilibrium. And I recall the fact that we said that um, if you consider the salt in water, you observe that the salt in water, you observe the salt in water, salt dissolves in water rather, and you observe that the salt breaks into, the salt breaks into what they call um, ions, as is the positive and the negative ions. And one of the things that we can easily see is the fact and we have to establish what they mean by what dynamic equilibrium, whereby we consider the fact that the rate of the forward vector, both of that are the same rate, we call that a dynamic equilibrium. Once we also talk about the fact that we look into the first irreversible reaction, and we first claim that the reversible reaction is. Um, the reaction can, the reaction can be said to be the can be said to be what it's reaction. What is the reversible reaction? The reversible reaction is the reaction that occurs in what the fourth rate and the backward rate are changed. Now, it conditions. It occurs at the same time. So, now, learning that, we also go dive into um, I'm going to talk about the dynamic equilibrium part of everything. You also learn about what I call, um, how will I put this thing? You consider, you learn about what they call, and uh, when we consider A, A plus B, B, giving us C, C plus D, D. This is known as what the law of what? Of mass action. Law of mass action. In the law of mass action, we learned something. And what do we learn under the law of mass action? We learn that, we learn that the concentration is directly proportional to the what? The, the concentration is directly proportional to the active masses, or better say the rate directly proportional to the, the active masses present in the what? In the reaction. So if you have um, R1, directly proportional to what? A, A, and B. Then we get for R2, that was not towards C, C, and D. So these two, very, very important thing. R1 is the rate of the forward reaction, and R2 is the rate of the backward reaction. And we're able to look at different expressions. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to know something that is very important, that under every, under this part, we need to know about the expression. God feedbacks on the fact that, oh, this expression, that why can't we just, Let's take more examples. Take more examples and various things. Yeah, that is true. Looking at more examples, let's consider, let's consider half H2 plus half Cl2, giving us HCl. And to write this according to equilibrium, the K equilibrium, therefore, will be equals to HCl over H2 half CO2. Ah, the mistake many students do make is trying to, is forgetting about the number of moles present in the what, in the reaction. You need to always account for it. That is why every student must know that when writing or better student expressing a, a chemical equation, you need to always put that chemical equation in terms of what, of the number of moles. Don't forget that. Now, I said that if you have a system at equilibrium, we need to know that there is what they call factors that affect that system. Factors that affect that system. You need to understand that because in exams, you see that very, very well. Very popular things in the exam. So you need to understand. And one problem about this part of the of the sub, of um, writing jam is the fact that you get exposed to various what word problem questions. Questions that can cause the, that, that can be there that can waste your time. So if you don't get the if you don't get the basics, you fall off. You follow, so you need to understand everything. Now let's take something. 
let's take something. Now, if we are going to enter what they call the factors affecting the action mechanism. Sorry, the factors affecting equilibrium position. Factors affecting equilibrium positions. Now, if we go to the factors equilibrium position, number one there is what? Temp Before we go to number one, we need to understand the system called what? Le Chantelier's principle. Very, very popular thing that scientists must know. And what is the Chantelier's principle? It states that if an external constraint, such as change in temperature, pressure or concentration is imposed on the system. Is imposed on the system. It's now said that the system is what we shift. The system is what we shift so as to annul or neutralize the effect. So as to annul or neutralize the effect. So that tells us that that exposes us to the fact that that there are factors that affect chemical equilibrium. The first one there is temperature. How does temperature affect chemical equilibrium? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. So we need to understand that. Let's do that. Let's consider two reactions there. Because that two reaction, because that first, the first reaction there is an endothermic reaction. Because that an endothermic reaction, before we continue, what is an endothermic reaction? Ha. An endothermic reaction is a reaction in which heat is being absorbed from the system, from the surrounding, from the system. So when heat is absorbed, we call that system in what? An endothermic reaction. And we need to note that the enthalpy of equilibrium, sorry, of endothermic reaction is what? Is positive. Is positive value, a positive value. So let's consider that system first. If we consider that system, we need to understand something about that. And what we need to understand is the fact that if we, you can look at the question there, uh, let's pick one of those things there. You see n 2 4 gas. <laughs> N2O4 gas gives us 2NO2. And we're told that the H is equal to positive. Aha. Please understand this very, very Please follow me and listen attentively, please. Please follow me and listen attentively. I want to bring out something from this today. Okay. Now. Based on this, and so forgive not to and also. Now, what happens if um, what happens if the reaction if temperature is increased? If temperature is increased, what happens? That's what we want to learn here. If temperature is increased in an endothermic reaction, if temperature is increased, what happens? The reaction will shift to the right. That is the equilibrium. The the, the, the equilibrium. Not the, not the, the equilibrium will shift to the right. The equilibrium will shift to the right. When the equilibrium shifts to the right, you can easily deduce that more of this NO2 will be produced. More of NO2 will be produced. So if we increase temperature of the system, more of the what of NO2 will be produced. Why? Because the equilibrium will shift to the right. The equilibrium will shift to the right. What about when you decrease the decrease temperature in an endothermic reaction? What happens? Is the fact that the equilibrium will shift to the what to the left. So we have more of the reactant, more of the reactant, which is not what we want. In case we want to produce more of the product. So the what favors the what favors the formation of, of more products in an endothermic reaction is an increase in temperature. Is an increase in temperature. Now you can next thing you need to know is you look at the next slide. You see on the that they said there. What happens to an exothermic reaction? What happens to an exothermic reaction? So if you've got an exothermic reaction, let's say I have an exothermic, a very popular one, N2 plus 3H2, giving us 2NH3. Delta H is equal to what? Negative. Delta H is equal to what? Negative. Now when the delta H equals to negative. Now, what is an exothermic reaction? And the thermic reaction that is a reaction in which it is being lost to the world, to the system. In which it is lost to the system. So when it is lost, we call that system what? An ex exothermic reaction. An exothermic reaction. Now, what happens? Now we need to understand something, please. Understand something. Now when you increase temperature, if temperature is increased for an exothermic reaction, Temperature is increased in an endothermic reaction. The equilibrium will shift to where? Left. Equilibrium shifts what? Equilibrium. Equilibrium 
shift shift to the left equilibrium shift to the left so when you increase temperature for an epidemic reaction what happens equilibrium will shift to the left we will shift to the left and in that case we have more of that reactant we have more of that reactant and little of the coolant but when you decrease temperature decrease temperature decrease temperature for an exothermic reaction, what happens? We have more of the product. More of product is produced. More of product is formed, brother. More of product is what is formed. More of product is formed. When more product is formed, we call that what? We call that an exothermic reaction. Because when you decrease temperature, more product. If you increase temperature, more reactants. Let's get it. Let's take it again. Let's take it again. So, what happens when you increase temperature in a system? First of all, you consider an endothermic reaction and an exothermic reaction. For an endothermic reaction, if you increase temperature, we observe that more of the product is formed. Why? Because equilibrium will shift to the right. If you decrease temperature, we observe that more of the reactant is being what formed. Why? Because why? Because equilibrium shift to the what to the left. But if you have an exothermic reaction, if you increase temperature, what happens is that equilibrium will shift to the left. For an exothermic reaction. But if you but if you decrease temperature, it will shift to the right. To the right. To the right. So you need to understand that very, very well. That is with regards to temperature. Next one is pressure. 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 How does pressure affect the system? How does pressure affect the system? First of all, we need to know something very, very well. For you to have an effect of pressure on chemical equilibrium of the system, the system must be in gaseous state. If this time is not in gaseous state, there will be no effect of what? Of pressure. Please and gentlemen, please, please do that. There will be no effect of what? Of pressure. So the system must be in what? In gaseous state. So what happens? So what happens? Let's consider an hypothetical reaction. An hypothetical reaction. An hypothetical reaction. I want to explain me. An hypothetical, we use an hypothetical reaction, then we will not consider in real life um reaction this was that one let's say i have two a plus b giving me two c ladies and gentlemen Please understand something now. I have an hypothetical reaction on the board. 2A plus B giving me 2C. What happens? Please understand this very, very well. Now, when you increase pressure of a system, we observe that the equilibrium will shift to the side with the most number of moles. So, sorry, we will shift to the side with the fewest number of moles. So, so I take that again. So when you increase pressure of the system, it will shift to the side with the fewest number of moles. With the fewest number of moles. So it will shift to the side with the fewest number of moles. But if you decrease pressure, it will shift to the side with the, with the most number of moles. With the most number of moles. So you need to know that. So let's use this hypothetical to explain that. So if I increase pressure, if I increase pressure, increase pressure, first of all, if I increase pressure, first of all, 2A plus B means three moles. And how many moles do you have here? You have just two moles. So if I increase pressure, you observe that equilibrium will shift to what? To the right. Why? Because I have a less number of what? Of um, number of moles on the right-hand side. This is two moles. This is three moles. If I have two moles, I have three moles. We observe that equilibrium will shift away to the right. Therefore, I have more of the product. More of the product. More of the product. More of the product. Now, what if I decrease pressure? Ah, this is what happens. This is what happens. This is what happens. By decrease pressure, it grows to the side with what? With the most number of moles. And the side with the most number of moles is what? Is 2A plus B. So therefore, it will shift away to the left. To the what? To the left. To the left. So when you decrease pressure of the system, it will shift to the what? To the left. To the left. To the left. So in that case, we've done this hypothetical reaction. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's consider a reaction. Let's consider a reaction. Very, 
let me see what let's do configuration in, in, in our flight. Uh, okay, that is an ammonia system. Let's use an ammonia N2 plus 3H2, giving us 2NH3. Now, the number of moles here is what? Four moles. Number of moles here is what? Two moles. Now, <laughs> let's understand. In what way? They are all in gaseous state. True. They are all in gaseous state. Note that. They are all in gaseous state. They are all in gaseous state. In what way can we increase the amount of ammonia? And we just ponder about that. Let's ponder about that. Let's ponder about that. Based on pressure, in what way can we increase the amount of ammonia? Let's ponder. Let's ponder. We're going to increase pressure or we're going to decrease pressure. Let's ponder about that. Let's ponder about that. Let's ponder about that. Let's ponder. Now we can have, let's go back to it. We recall that when we increase pressure, it will you to decide with the what? With the fewest number of moves. And we observe that on the left hand side, we have four moves. On the right hand side, we have two moves. So if I increase pressure, it will shift to the right. Equilibrium will shift to the right. If you don't shift to the right, you can say that we have more of ammonia form. More of ammonia form. See? So you need to understand it. So it's like this. So in terms of pressure, for you to feel ammonia, you have to increase the pressure. You have to increase the pressure. Now, the next thing I need to consider there is volume. Volume is similar to pressure. I didn't write that in the slide. I didn't show that in the slide, but I wanted to let us know. Volume is similar to what pressure, but it is the other way around. So here, you increase pressure. You see that the side with the fewest number of moles is being favored. But in volume, if you increase volume, the side with the most number of moles will be favored. We be favored. Then let me again. So if you increase volume, if you increase volume, you increase volume, what happens is that the side with most number of moles, most number of moles, most number of moles is favored. That means we can the number of moles is favored. You see what if that happens, we can clearly say that equilibrium will shift to the what to that part of it. So if I'm increasing volume in this system, look at this system, I increase volume, side with the most number of moles is favored. That means the equilibrium will shift to where to the left. Left, if I increase volume, it's not shift to the what to the left, to the left. But if I decrease volume, side with the what with the fewest number of moles we will be favored. The side with the fewest number of moles will be favored, and that will be the right hand side. So sometimes we can also be talking about in terms of volume too. I didn't put that in the slide, but I wanted to talk about it. That is in terms of what for pressure. The next thing you need to know is what we need to consider here is concentration. 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 How can concentration affect? How does it affect um, equilibrium? That's what I want to learn that today. 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 Quickly, that is the case of that. Please understand that concentration. First of all, concentration. Now, if a substance is added to the system, what will happen? If a substance is removed from the system, what will happen? These are two things we need to understand. I tell that again. If a substance is added to the system, and if a substance is removed from the system, what happens? What happens? What happens? In the case of the system, of a, in the case of a substance added to the system, what happens is that the reactant will consume more of the substance. The reactant will consume more of the substance. The reactant will consume more of the substance. When you put Substance when you when you add a particular substance, the reactant will consume more of it. It does not consume more, consume more, consume more. It get exhausted. But now it now gets so funny. If you are removing the product, if you are removing the product, what will happen to the system? What of the system is the fact that the reactants will produce more of the product. They are what we produce more of the product. So as I removing the system, as I removing the product rather from the system, we observe that the reactant will produce more. It's more of like what happens in um in in bread make, bread making companies. In bread making companies, you observe that the 
when they make a particular um, batch of bread, they remove the bread and they continue with the process and everything. So it's something similar to that. So, so when you are when you remove the product from the system, you know that you need to know and you need to know very, very well that what the more the product will be what will be produced more and more, more and more, more and more, more and more. So please please note that very, very well. So that's what happened in terms of concentration. Now, let's, let's, let's consider for a reaction at the equilibrium. The next, you see the next slide there, for a reaction at the equilibrium. You see that for a reaction at the equilibrium, the forward reaction is being favored by an increase in concentration. That is true. It moves system like that. So when you add more of the reactants, sorry, when you add more, when you increase concentration, you favor the forward reaction most of the time. You favor it. And when you favor it, you need to know that there will be an increase in the concentration of the reactant or decrease in the concentration of the what of the product. So when you add concentration, one of them must happen. One of them must happen. Also again, the backward reaction is also favored by an increase in concentration of the product or a decrease in the concentration of the what of the reactant. And all this is said in terms of the ammonia process. In terms of the ammonia process. So understand concentration very, very well. The next one I need to consider there is what catalyst, 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 catalyst. I remember back then when we in, our, in one of our series we talked about the rates of chemical reaction, and one thing we talked about was catalyst, effect of catalyst on this, on on the, on in kinetics. Now we are also having catalyst catalyst here too. So we're not looking at the catalyst of the reaction. We are looking at the, what the, the chemical was equilibrium, and what does the catalyst do? The catalyst can increase the rate of both the forward and the backward. Yeah, so catalyst is more of like is more like programmed in what the person that is using catalyst to, wants to do. So what do you desire for the catalyst to do? Is what the catalyst does in a chemical reaction. And in that process, you can recall that you can look at the look at the chart there. You can look at the chart there. You can see R R and R F. R R and R F. You can see E R and E F. All those things they are telling us what they call. We have what they call a catalyzed reaction and an uncatalyzed reaction. An uncatalyzed reaction is the reaction that just occurs without a catalyst. But a catalyzed reaction is the reaction that occurs when you have the presence of a catalyst. The presence of a catalyst is a catalyzed reaction. In the absence of a catalyst is what an uncatalyzed reaction. An uncatalyzed reaction. So we need to understand this very, very well. So if you have a catalyst, what happens to the catalyst? You can also say that the the equilibrium is also achieved faster. So the equilibrium is also achieved faster. But you observe that the equilibrium composition will remain what on all that. The amount of the substance, the substance it's not, it, the amount should not be in composition, the, it will not, it's not be all, it's not be altered. It's not be changed. It's not be changed. You need to note that very, very well. Now let's go to I, well, I, I said consider the flow reactions. I had the reasons why I said let's consider that. Let's consider that reaction. Let's consider the flow reaction there. The first one there is CO gas. CO gas plus H2 gas to give us CO2 gas plus H2 gas. Now, hmm, this is what this was. I wanted us to, let's do more about this. Let's, let's think. Okay, let me write this. Let me write this reaction too. So we'll talk about them together. H2 gas. Plus Cl2 gas, giving us 2HCl gas. Now, the bone of contention here is that we want to know, we want to know if, aha, if pressure can affect the system. I brought out those reactions, why? Because I want to know if pressure can affect the system. Is it possible? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. We recall. Back when we're talking about pressure, and one of those things that we did back under pressure was the fact that we consider the fact that there is a difference in the number of moves. Number of moves on the left hand side was not dependent, but not the same with the number of moves on the right hand side. And that was why we're easy to, 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 um, to make some deductions, to make some conclusions. So, and that is why we need to understand this very, very well. Let's look at this reaction, reaction, the first reaction and the second reaction. We can see clearly that they all, the two reactions all have the same number of what, of moves. We all have the same number of moves. We all have the same number of moves. 
And therefore, we need to conclude that there will be no effect of pressure on the system. To be, there will be no effect. But I don't know, you cannot see effect in this system. Why? Because they have the same number of moves. It is because if you consider a reaction like PCO5, that's we have PCL3, that's your CL2. In that case, you have one mole, you have two moles here. Therefore, you believe that pressure will affect the system. Pressure will affect the system. In that case, we, pressure will affect the system, pressure will not affect this system. Pressure will not affect the system. <laughs> Is that clear? Is that clear? No. The, let's go to the next point over there. The next point there. The reactions have the same number of gas molecules in reactant and food of cedars. Reducing or increasing the volume will cause equal effect on both sides. So no net reaction will occur too. So fine. We look at the volume too. <laughs> with that amount of volume, with any amount of volume have effect here? No. No effect on the volume. No effect. Because you see that they have the same number of moves. So no pressure effect. No. So sometimes you just see some questions in the exam, in jam, and give a chemical reaction and impose an idea about something. And you see that option D, option E, you put there, no effect. <laughs> so you need to pay attention to questions like that. Not that you, no effect. And that is why you need to pay attention. Questions can come in various ways. They come in various ways. So you need to understand uh, all those modest problems very, very well. So, now, the next thing you need to also consider here is based on what I have here. Is equilibrium is not affected by change in pressure. I've said that already. Now let's look at questions to round up this section. We've done part one, we're in the part two. I'm happy that we are all following. To wrap up this section, let's talk about some questions. The first one there is what? A dynamic equilibrium. A dynamic equilibrium, option A, is when the rate of the fourth reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. B is a form of static equilibrium. C only occurs in chemical equilibrium. D involves radioactivity. So we can easily see what should be the answer. Uh, I want us to worry about it. Let not just be saying about the answer. Let's think about it if I say the answer. This is more about this if I say the answer. What do you want to pick? Is your option E? Is your option B? Is your option C? Is your option D? What is your idea? Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it before I say the answer. Just two minutes. What do you think? Probably have a pain there with us. Just two minutes for us to think. Just think. So you can see that the, when the end of the fourth reaction, and, and the reverse equation are they are, are what are equal. So let's understand questions like that. So the answer is so uh, look at let's look at the option there, option C. Only occurs in chemical equilibrium. That is, uh, no, 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 no. The equilibrium does not only occur in chemical equilibrium. Involves radioactivity. Uh, uh, no, does not involve radioactivity. Is a form of static equilibrium? Mm, no. The answer is what? Dynamic equilibrium is when the rate, I even said that earlier today, is when the rate of the fourth direction and rate of backward are what? Are equal to each other. They are equal to each other. The next question there, which one of the following, which one of the following is incorrect? Which one of the following is incorrect? Which one of the following is incorrect? And you can look at the options there. Option A, equilibrium is dynamic as some molecules are always reacting. Okay, B, the equilibrium constant is just the ratio of the forward to the reverse. That is true. Option B is correct, makes more sense. At equilibrium, the concentration no longer change with time. At equilibrium, the concentration no longer change. Yes, that is true. That is true. D, the equilibrium constant is not affected by temperature changes. Not affected by temperature changes. The not affected by temperature changes. Uh, it's not affected by temperature changes. No, uh, it's affected by temperature changes. So the answer is what is D. Is D. Is D. So we decided incorrect D. 
this the best answer. You see, you see how those questions are. I have to take my time to answer them. That is how the problem is. So you need to understand the basics of it. You need to understand it. The next question there, a chemical system, a chemical system is at equilibrium. A, when the rate of the four direction becomes zero, like it because zero, that is, that is not a real good answer. B, when the rate of the four direction, the reverse reaction are equal, let's keep that one side. C, when all of the reactants have been used up, no, no. D, when the rate of the four direction, the reverse reaction are both zero, no. The best answer to that question is when the rate of the Ford reaction and the reverse reaction are equal. Chemical system. The next question there. The next question there. You can see the next question there. You can see. I would say way to completion. B, being non spontaneous. C, the presence of both reactant and product in a definite proportion. D, A, and B. They are characterized by what? They are characterized by what? The answer is D, A, and B. Going to completion and being non spontaneous. Please note that. Non spontaneous means that the item will be what? Will be forced. Will be forced. So the answer to that question is option D, A, and B. Next one, the yield of AB gas, the yield of AB gas, ha, uh, could be the, would be increased by, ha, uh, would be increased by, how can you increase this? A, decreasing the pressure. So you have, see this very nice question? You have A gas plus B gas, giving you A, B gas. So this is, is that decrease, decreasing the pressure? Be adding additional AB to the reaction mixture. C, decreasing the temperature. D, adding a non-reactive liquid to the reaction mixture. Hmm. This is a very good question. Very, very good question. They said that decreasing temperature. First of all, we don't know if the question is. That is that of the Adding a non-reactive liquid to the reaction mixture. Now, what is a non-reactive liquid? A non-reactive liquid can serve as what? An inert substance. So when we add an inert substance, so when we have an inert substance, then we can easily see, when we have an inert substance, we can easily see that an inert substance is something that, what, that does not react to the system, does not react. So in that case, in that case, you can clearly see that the system the system, we have no effects. We, so adding an inner substance, we now have no effect on the system. The next question there is what? It said decreasing pressure. If you decrease pressure in a system like this, we recall that an increase in pressure will fill the side with the fewest number of moves. And that means if I decrease pressure, the side with the most number of moves will be favored. Will be favored. And the side with the most number of moves is what? Is the left hand side. So this option is wrong. This option is wrong. Does that make sense? Does not make sense, bro. The last one, adding additional AB to the reaction mixture. Yes, the adding additional AB to the reaction mixture, like concentration, you favor the forward reaction and therefore increase the yield. Two SO3 gas. Now, this is a very good question. Two SO3 gas plus, if sorry, giving us SO3. So, sorry, two SO two gas plus O two gas. We are given that the delta H is equals to what? Plus one nine eight kilo joules. Plus one nine eight kilo joules. All of the following changes would shift the equilibrium to the left. Hmm. All of the following will shift the equilibrium to the left except one. Which one would not cause the equilibrium to shift to the left? Very good question. Option A, the moving sum of SO3. Ah, let's keep that one side. Adding sum of SO2. Let's keep that one side. Decreasing the temperature. This is an endothermic reaction. If you decrease temperature, the equilibrium will shift to the left. So option C is correct. They don't they work check on that. D. Adding catalyst that speeds up the reaction. Option D is also what? Correct. 
So the problem here is between um, A and B. So if I am if I am removing some SO3, that means I'm removing some of the reactant. Therefore, equilibrium will shift to where? The left. Makes more sense. The left. Because I'm, I'm decreasing the amount of the reactant. So therefore, equilibrium will shift to the left. But if I'm adding some of SO2, ah, uh, no, no. Equilibrium will shift to the, one, the right. Therefore, the answer to that question is option B. You see the way we don't analyze the question? And it's like we have to take our time to analyze. So that's why when you get to the example, it happens like that. So please, let's take our time. And when we see one question like chemical equilibrium, take your time. Decipher the question. You see me, I have to explain each of the options very well. So any of you that are saying, they don't assume that ah, this option is correct. Be very, very sure. Be very, very sure. So guys, ladies and gentlemen, if you observe very, very well that in all the things that, that we did today, you need to do one thing for me. You need to go ahead and practice some of your questions, some of your past questions in your jam, take your jam past questions on that chemical equilibrium. Practice them, practice them. So you get familiar with the question. So you get familiar with the question. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and thanks for listening. So we will continue, in, we continue next week and let's see if we can start a new series. Thanks for your time. Do have a nice day.